like to welcome all of you. This is the um, forum for the uh, Republican candidates for the County Board District 4. There are uh, six candidates who are here today. Um, my name is Gilda Crew. I am the moderator for this forum. I am with the League of Women Voters of the Arlington Heights, Mount Prospect, Buffalo Grove area, so I am neutral. I do not have any personal interest in any of these contests today. Um, just wanted to review some of the uh, rules for today's forum. They are printed on um, in the um, brochures that you received, and there are also short biographies of the candidates in, in these brochures. Um, but the ground rules are as follows. Uh, all of the candidates who are participating today agreed to and signed and returned the ground rules, and the rules specify the format, time limits, and other rules related to the conduct of the forum, and I will be responsible for enforcing these rules. And as I told the other candidates, uh, I don't mean to be rude, but I will cut you off when our timekeepers show the stop sign. And we do have uh, timekeepers who have signs that show when you have one minute, 30 seconds, 15 seconds, and the stop. Um, so, um, so that will um, indicate to you how much more time you have and start wrapping up, especially when you see that 15 second um, sign. Then, each candidate will have two minutes for an opening statement, one minute to respond to each question, and one minute to make a closing statement. And again, the, our timers will be uh, timing the responses and they start timing when uh, you start talking, okay? Then, um, we've asked the audience to write down their questions and we have a group of question sorters in the back who are diligently reviewing the questions, trying to combine any similar questions, and also making sure that the questions are appropriate. As I stated before, each question needs to be something that can be asked of and answered by all of the candidates. They should not be directed at any one candidate, uh, like, oh, you made this position this time, what do you, you know, whatever. No, none of those questions. Either they'll be eliminated or they'll be rewritten so that all of the candidates can answer them. Um, we've asked the candidates uh, and also the audience to please keep uh, all campaign materials outside this room, but don't put any signs outside. Um, then we've asked the candidates to agree that they will not use any voice, image, video, or other recording of the forum in their campaign. Uh, this forum is being videographed. It will be on YouTube in about 24 hours, I think that we were told. And so you can go and look at it there. But we ask the candidates not to uh, use anything from here. Uh, part of that reason is that sometimes things are taken out of context and they actually distort the political process and the league does not want to be a part of anything like that. We also uh, ask that you refrain from taking photos or videos. Uh, it's distracting to members of the audience and we believe it's more conducive to a free exchange of ideas if you're not busy filming. Um, and we respectfully request that you not pull out your cameras or your smartphones uh, to be engaged in that. The other thing, speaking of smartphones and cell phones, please be sure that they are in the mute or vibrate um, mode so that they are not distracting uh, during the forum. And finally, I want to emphasize how grateful we are for these candidates who are not only willing to serve in office, but who have agreed to come today. Uh, please show these candidates your appreciation and respect. Uh, do not clap, cheer, boo, applaud, or otherwise vocalize your agreement or disagreement with any question or answer. Um, the uh, there were lots drawn to see who would speak first. Uh, the candidates are seated in the order in which they will speak. And then again, we will alternate in terms of candidates answering a question first, second, third. Uh, we'll keep going down the line. Um, we only have one microphone, so I ask the candidates to be <coughs> indulgent and to pass the mic as we're, as we're going, um, going through here. So with that, we'll get, uh, 
we'll get started, and uh, I, I, I will read off the uh, names of the candidates. Uh, we have uh, Craig Chinchilla, Ron Almiron, Grant Eckhoff, Christopher Zaruba, Elizabeth or Beth Tatro. It, I pronounced that right. Yes, yeah. Okay. And Paula McGowan. So those are our candidates. Uh, and we will start with the two-minute introductions. And the first uh, two-minute introduction will be given by Craig Chinchilla. Hi, good morning. Hi, my name is Craig Chinchilla. I'm a Republican candidate for DuPage County Board District 4. And I wanted to tell you a little bit about myself and why I'm running. I've lived here in Glen Ellen for 21 years. I've been married to my wife, Dorothy, for 26 years. I've raised six wonderful children. And I've been a business owner for the last 14 years. You know, DuPage County has been a great place to live, work, and raise a family. But our way of life here is threatened by economic pressures. Simply put, taxes are way too high. Everyone wants to move. You may not know it, but DuPage County collects $2.74 billion a year in property taxes. They take a small percentage of it, then they distribute it back out to over 400 governmental units here in the county. This is why your taxes are way too high. Government needs to stop going back to the taxpayer and asking for more and more money. It's not good enough to keep taxes level. We have to reduce the tax burden and consolidate government. As a business owner who helps businesses become more efficient, I'll bring a unique set of skills to the county board that's not only found by people who only have government experience. If we're going to maintain and improve our quality of life here in DuPage County, DuPage County needs to become more efficient in the way it operates and reduce its size and scope and cut spending. I'll help DuPage County take a leadership role by first leading by example, cutting costs, and demonstrating that the county can do more with less. I'll then encourage local governments to work together to find opportunities to reduce costs, eliminate duplicacy, and consolidate. I'll work with businesses and municipalities to grow our local economy and reduce our dependency on property taxes. Most importantly, I'll work with, the, with our district and with you. That's why I'm asking for you to let me be the your voice on the board. Thank, Thank you. Uh, Ron Almiron will give the uh, next opening statement. You have two minutes. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming out here today, and thank you to the League of Women Voters of Glen Ellen for this opportunity. My name is Ron Alron, and I'm a Republican running for County Board of District 4. I was born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, uh, to two immigrants, uh, a medical intern. Uh, my father is a retired general surgeon. For my own career, I went the lawyer route. Uh, my wife of 16 years, Victoria, is also a lawyer. Uh, we we're raising uh, one son in Wheaton. As I get older, I think about more about my future, about what I could do for my young family. Over the years, I've been concerned about the families and the individuals of DuPage County. What DuPage County has done over the years uh, for its citizens is a legacy. But as good as it is, I think we could do even better. We could be more responsible, reducing government spending, and be more efficient within the government itself. I've proved their results. I'm one of the few candidates in this race have actually voted to approve budgets. In spring of 2015, I was named by uh, Chairman Cronin and the County Board to be on the Wheaton Mosquito Abatement District as a trustee. I've been a treasurer for the last two years. Um, there I voted to decrease uh, or maintain um, the tax levies. And uh, recently, I objected uh, to increasing the tax levy. Uh, I offer proven results, and I promise, if elected, uh, to keep taxes low, just as they were done at the district. Another accomplishment of mine was that I rejected a proposal to add a $22,000 consultant, a uh, uh, person who happened to be the outgoing president uh, of the district who had moved to Batavia. Um, I will, on, on the county board, I will scrutinize uh, I, any uh, vendors and consultants that want to do business with the county. Over the years, and not since uh, last fall, I've been in touch with all the communities I've rep represented. I'm a parishioner and lecturer at St. Michael's Church in downtown Wheaton. For the past two years, I've served as secretary on my school's uh, board. Thank you. I hope you vote Thank for you. me. Thank you. Uh, the next opening statement is from Grant Eckhoff, and you have two minutes. Good 
My name is Grant Eckhoff. I currently serve on the DuPage County Board for the last 14 years. I was on the Wheaton City Council before that time, and most of my biography is on my walk piece that's outside. Uh, the other important facts, I think, from that are that I've been a resident of District 4 for over 50 years, and I've run my own law firm uh, in Wheaton for 22 years. Um, my entire goal as an elected public official has been to deliver essential governmental services at the lowest tax rate. And I've tried to do that the entire time I've been an elected official. When I was in Wheaton, I focused on revenue, uh, increased the uh, revenue downtown by spurring on businesses and restaurants downtown because I knew if sales tax revenue went up, the reliance on property taxes would go down. At the county level, I've worked on uh, consolidation. We've consolidated the uh, DuPage County Youth Home with the Kane County Youth Home that saved approximately $10 million. We've consolidated PSAPs, which is the people that you call when you make a 911 call, uh, from about 27 down to about three. That saved $7 million. And recently we passed, uh, in cooperation with the Sheriff's Office, we entered into a contract with deputies in the courthouse so that we can now hire uh, court security as opposed to a sworn deputy, which is basically a retired police officer with a gun and save the county half a million dollars once that's implemented by the sheriff's office. So I've worked hard on those items. Uh, those are, that's been my focus as an elected official, but of course as an elected official you also run into issues that you didn't expect, and one of them is the heroin epidemic. And I've been co-chairman of the uh, task force at the county now for three years, and I think we've uh, effectively de uh, dealt with that issue and we've become a leader in the state of Illinois. So on March 20th, I'm asking for your support and your vote. Thank you. Thank you. The next opening statement is from Christopher Zaruba. Thank you. My name is Chris Zaruba. I'm a law, I'm a lawyer in family law in Wheaton, where I live with my wife, Mandy, actually right across the street here down Hawthorne. I'm a graduate of Wheaton Warrenville South High School, University of Illinois, and the John Marshall Law School. I'd love to tell you a little bit about myself today. I was raised in Wheaton with my brother and sister, raised by my two parents, who raised us on conservative principles, tradition, family values, and public service. I'm a former felony prosecutor at the DuPage County State's Attorney's Office, where I prosecuted violent offenders and drug dealers. After working at the State's Attorney's Office, I went into private practice. In private practice in Wheaton, part of my job includes being represented by judges here in DuPage County to represent the best interests of minor children, some who have been abused and neglected. I'm running for the office of DuPage County board member in District 4 due to my dedication to our community. I'm also running because I believe I'm the only candidate before you today who has experience working both in public service as well as in the private sector. I do believe I'm the best candidate. If I did not believe that, I wouldn't be running today. Your next county board representative will need to address a number of issues that are affecting our community today. And it's my goal to provide this community with a stronger voice on the county board. DuPage County State's Attorney Bob Berlin, our coroner Rich Jorgensen, and our current sheriff have all endorsed my campaign and me as they believe that I am the best candidate before you today to tackle the growing and unfortunate opioid crisis. Village presidents, councilmen and women, village trustees, past and present, from Wheaton, Glendale Heights, Lombard, and here in Glen Ellen have endorsed my campaign as the candidate best suited to grow our sales revenue and increase public-private partnerships in this county to ease the burden of our sizable tax burden. And the Daily Herald has recently endorsed my campaign due to my specific solutions provided to them in this race. I look forward to discussing all these issues with you and others this morning Thank you. regarding your endorsement. Thank you. Thank you. Our next opening statement is from Elizabeth Beth Tetro, and you have two minutes. Thank you. Um, and thank you so much, all of you, for being here on a Saturday morning. I know that um, time is of the essence and everyone is busy. Um, I'm also running for DuPage County Board in District 4. Just a little bit about me. Uh, I've lived in Wheaton with my husband for about 10 years. We've got three kids, um, which definitely keeps us busy, but also super active in the community, which is great. I've got a strong uh, Republican background. I grew up in Naperville with my parents. My mom's a retired teacher. Uh, my dad's an engineer. I attended Bennett Academy in Lyle. I went to Purdue. Um, I noticed there's a gentleman with that IU sweatshirt, so <laughs> shout out to you, um, Indiana. Um, 
I earned my MBA from DePaul. For the last 15 years, I've built a career advocating for the heavy highway construction industry. Um, most recently, for the last five years, I've been working with the chief engineer at the Illinois Tollway to help them deliver their $14 billion capital program. I've seen some of the awesome partnerships firsthand that Illinois Tollway has had with DuPage County. I don't know if any of you have driven north or seen Illinois Route um, 390, but um, they're doing some great things, creating western access to the airport, um, and even the economic development and some of the um, job creation that's happening there already is fantastic. Uh, I'm a fiscal conservative. I want to make sure that DuPage County is maximizing our tax dollars. I think there's some awesome things we can do in terms of shared services and um, partnerships. Um, I've sat with uh, the Forest Preserve to talk about some of the opportunities there, um, taking advantage of our existing assets. I want to see the great things we can do with um, the fairgrounds and things like that. So ultimately, I want to keep this a great place to live and work and raise a family, and I want to provide for my children the same opportunities that I had growing up. But I'm not just in it for my family, but for yours too. Thank you. Thank you. And our final opening statement is from Paula McGowan. And you have two minutes. Hello, my name is Paula McGowan, and I'm a candidate for District 4 County Board. I'm a lifelong resident of DuPage County. I was raised in Lombard, uh, and then went to, uh, uh, then I moved to Glen Allen, where I raised my children, and they all went to Glen Allen schools. I'm fiscally conservative, I'm very frugal with my money, and I will surely be frugal with yours. Uh, I want everybody to know a little bit about me, but I've been uh, going and attending county board meetings for many, many years. Other than the county board member here, I've done, I've been going through these uh, campaigns and going and, and going to um, uh, county board meetings for many, many years. Why do I want to run for county board? I like helping others. I like working on projects. Um, I want a clean and transparent uh, process. Uh, over the years, I've campaigned for many county board members, judges, state representatives, forest preserve members. I've been elected to the Regional Board of School Trustees. I'm a Milton Township Committeeman. I'm a League of Women Voter Member uh, Director. I've helped reinstate the drug court in 2002 when I had to fight the county on the drug epidemic that we had out here. And I was really disappointed at the, at the time that we knew we had a problem out here and none of the county board members wanted to take action. But I didn't stop because I said we have an epidemic and before we have more problems and people dying, we better get a step on it. Um, I've helped stop a $70 million government project um, that they wanted to put an addition to the jail and I stopped that. Um, I've uh, been a member of the women's group in York Township um, and in uh, Bloomingdale. So I've been bringing water to the elephant um, for many years and I'm asking for your support. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, uh, if you pass the microphone down, uh, Ron Almiron will be giving, uh, will be answering the first question first and then it will go down the line and back to Mr. Chinchilla last. Um, and the first question is, what is the most important thing you want to accomplish in your term if you are elected? Mr. Almiron, you have one minute. Thank you. Uh, some of you may know that there is vacant space over at the Moy Center, a um, couple of medical wings. I think they could be used uh, uh, to better use. Um, as you know, our baby boomer population is getting older, um, and we have to do something to address uh, uh, those in the county with uh, behavioral problems and uh, substance abuse problems like uh, the opioid epidemic. And I'd be in favor of uh, a public-private partnership uh, to fill those uh, vacancies uh, uh, so that uh, maybe in the short term um, those students who are uh, those students, those citizens who are in need uh, can be helped. Uh, uh, that's what I think uh, I would focus on both in the short term and the long term uh, as, a, as a county board member. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eckhoff. I think the most important thing uh, 
for us to do is to continue to maintain a low tax rate and like I said, continue to deliver the services that you all expect as citizens of DuPage County. In order to do that, I'd like to continue working on uh, my pet project, which has been consolidation of units of government. And uh, it's been successful in the past. I think we've got a long way to go. Illinois still got more units of government than any other state in the country. Uh, my, I focused, I started focusing on fire protection districts back in 2008, uh, but I, and that has, uh, I think that's worked and it formed the alliance, which is Wheaton, West Chicago, Winfield, Carroll Stream. They start train together, uh, work together, and now the uh, response time has gone down and safety's gone up. So there's lots of different ways you can go with consolidation of government, but I think in the long run it'll uh, deliver your services and save uh, your tax money. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. Springfield is an absolute mess right now. Absolute mess. Our county isn't getting any money from the state anymore because of the high tax burden that our state has. So I want to be part of the solution to that. And I wholeheartedly agree with Mr. Atkoff that the biggest goal for anyone up here is to be maintaining the low tax burden on our, our taxpayers. That said, although consolidation shared, shared services are fantastic, what I hope to bring to the county is a different outlook. An outlook of looking at not just keeping costs low, but also increasing sales tax. Not sales tax, but sales tax revenue. In doing so, one of the things I looked to do, and one of the things I mentioned in the Daily Herald was, let's bring in local businesses. Let's advertise out to local vendors. Let's use the services and businesses we have here to not only lower the costs for our vendors, but also give back to the community. Let's look at the people here and use those services. Thank you. Ms. Tatro? Um, I, I agree as well. I, I know that we want to keep our taxes low um, for our citizens, but we also want to maximize how we're using those tax dollars. Um, I've got a background in transportation, and I know that the Department of Transportation is um, at the county is going to get an influx of about $10 million um, once some bonds are paid off. So um, me having a background in transportation, I want to look to that and say, how can we maximize those dollars? How can we take that $10 million and turn it into $20 million and $40 million. What other municipalities and partners can we bring in um, to make the most of that money? Um, you know, I also think that um, there's an opportunity for us to take advantage of our existing assets. What are we doing with the fairgrounds? It's, that's a, that could be a beautiful, awesome space, and I think there's some real potential there. So those are just two of the things that I really want to look at when I'm on the board. Thank you. Ms. McGowan? Uh, well, the 2018 uh, county budget approved with no property increase for the last 10 years, so the county board, I believe, is li li uh, living within its means. But if anybody knows Paula, I started coming to these county board meetings in the year 2000 when I found out that we have an epidemic of heroin out this county, and we need to take some kind of control over this. We have many of the kids dying over this nonsense, you know, drug epidemic that we have out here. And we have to, we have to put a stop to it. But I, I think there is so much more that we can be doing with the heroin epidemic. Um, we need programs. Uh, we can't be putting these, these people in jails and plugging up our jails with $130 a day for these inmates. We have to keep control. We have to take control. And we have to get these people back on their feet again. Thank you. Thank you. And the, um, the final answer to this question will be given by uh, Mr. Chinchilla. You have one minute. Hi. Um, taking care of the heroin epidemic, it's a noble idea. Building roads here in DuPage, I think we have enough in District 4. I think it'll always be improved, but we have enough. And reducing uh, or improving business a whole bunch to reduce our, our dependency on property taxes, it's really not the main issue. DuPage County only collects 2.5% of your property taxes. The main thing that we really need to do is consolidate government, consolidate government. And then we have to use our leadership as a county to actually get all these other 400 local units of government on board to reduce. Because the bottom line is, even if DuPage County's tax bill totally goes away and everyone else raises your taxes, you're going to end up moving or starving. That's the bottom line. 
we need to consolidate. And that's my going to be my main focus on the board. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you could pass it down to Mr. Eckhoff, and he will be answering the next question first. And the question is, DuPage County demogra uh, demographics have changed immensely. <clears throat> How can the county board welcome and assimilate new residents, especially immigrants? You have one minute. Thank you. Um, I think DuPage County does a fine job now of welcoming and assimilating uh, everyone, anyone who moves into the area. Uh, I don't know of any type of discrimination that's being brought against anyone. I think everybody works together. We welcome people onto our boards. We welcome people into our schools, into our government. So uh, I think we're an open community, and we care about each other, and we work together well, but I don't know of any type of discrimination. Nobody's brought it to my attention at the county board as to how uh, we've done anything less than that. Thank you. Mr. Zaruka. Thank you. I think DuPage County government and the DuPage County community should be very, very, very proud of their welcoming um, atmosphere that we've created in this community, in this county, uh, towards minorities, uh, immigrants, refugees, um, people, of, people of all cultures. Um, you know, that said, the county board does take a uh, million dollars every year, and they take a million dollars of taxpayer money, and they take your money, and then they reallocate it out to nonprofit organizations. One of the things in answering this question is, if you're looking at all these nonprofit organizations, how many of these organizations are doing any sort of outreach out to minority communities, immigrant communities, refugees? That's one of the things I would look at as a county board member, take a look at, okay, one, does it need to be a million dollars, first off? And second, are we using it or utilizing it for any sort of outreach? Thanks. Thank you. Ms. Tetro? Uh, I, I also think, um, you know, I've been in this area for 10 years and I grew up in DuPage County and I think that we do a great job of welcoming um, immigrants. Um, we've definitely seen uh, the demographics change, but I can tell you my kids don't even know the difference. I mean, having um, kids in school and watching the different um, diversities come together is really fantastic. So I think that uh, we're doing a job, good job welcoming these immigrants and even more so the generations that follow are doing an even better job than we are. Um, I, I think that there are programs and there are um, a lot of churches and a lot of groups that are doing a great job um, representing um, those groups and helping those groups. Thanks so much. Thank you. Ms. McGowan. I think our county is doing a great job on welcoming everybody into the county. Um, we shouldn't discriminate on any race or, or culture. And I think we're doing a fine job. And if I did find out, you know, I would really do something about it because we all have a chance in this country and in this county to do well. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chinchilla. I can answer this question firsthand because my wife's an immigrant. And what happened with her when she came here, she went right into the classroom, they taught her English and they helped her become American. And that's what we need to do as a community. We need to bring people in that are coming in and teach them to be Americans, not to be separate from the community and have their own unique identity and not assimilate. We have to help people assimilate and do what we can to promote that. And if we do that, we'll have a great society because and ultimately, we're not an homogenous society. We're a society of a bunch of different people. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Almiron. If I understand the question correctly, uh, the question has to do with what the county uh, can do. I'm not sure if uh, there's anything the county can do other than uh, it does offer a lot of services and to the extent that they can welcome new immigrants and uh, kind of uh, uh, point them uh, to the government services uh, that the county has to offer, that would be great. Um, other than that, um, I'm speaking for myself, I'm a child of immigrants and I was assimilated uh, back in the 70s when I was a kid. Uh, so I really think that it starts uh, with uh, the family and at home in terms of how you treat other people um, that, that I believe in that one should be judged by the content of his char character, not the color of his skin. And I, I, I would do my very best to promote that uh, if I'm fortunate enough to be elected on the, co on the county board. 
and I'd serve as an example uh, that uh, our county is diverse. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by Mr. Zaruba, and the question is, what are your thoughts on the ballot initiative proposition to, to absorb the DuPage County Election Commission under the county clerk's office? So, Mr. Zaruba, you have one minute. Thank you. It's a great question. I, I do support the initiative. Um, I do believe that the election commission uh, should uh, be formed in with the clerk's office. So county just west of us in Kane County. They have an election commission, a recorder's office, and they have the clerk's office all in one. That means less personnel, less pensions, less health benefits, less cost to the taxpayer. I wholeheartedly agree with what uh, the county board is doing by putting the referendum on there. I hope that the taxpayers agree. I hope that Springfield agrees. I hope we're able to consolidate that. And quite honestly, I hope we take it one step further. There's a couple of offices in uh, our county government that are not constitutional uh, offices. In addition to the election commission being formed, the county auditor as well is not a constitutional office. This is a position that can also be consolidated. We could have a private auditor, a private company come in, audit all the county units of government, make these um, audits public, accessible to the public as well. So I, I do wholeheartedly support that initiative. Thank you. Um, Ms. Tatro? Uh, I also support the initiative. Can you hear me a little bit better? Um, I also support that initiative. Uh, I think that there's an opportunity for us to save money, and I think it's um, it's just good government. I think that the there's you know opportunity to share services and be more efficient, and I'm definitely in favor of that. I uh, hope that most of the voters also agree because I know that you do have to take it one step further, and it's not just that we you know the um, voters say yes or no and then it dies. There's um, more, more to it, you know, everything's a little bit more complicated than it sounds. So, um, I, like I said, I do think it's a good policy, I think it's good government, and uh, us consolidating and sharing services overall. Thank you. Ms. McGowan. Yes, I am for consolidating the um, Election Commission and the clerk's office together. Um, I think you're not going to see a big, big, vast savings right away because they're going to be moving both of them together, so all the employees will be there together still. But as time goes on and the years go by, uh, you don't hire when they retire. So then you're going to see the drastic move on the amount of money you're going to be saving. But not right away, but let's hang in there because I think it's going to be a good thing to do on consolidation for this, this uh, program. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chinchilla. I also agree with the consolidation of the Election Commission. When this first came up, I personally took the time to call the Election Commissioner and talk to him about it, and he even thought it was a great idea. Um, it's estimated that it, it should save the county about $300,000. Um, the county's already cut headcount in the uh, Election Commission. I think it will actually save more than $300,000. It's a good step toward uh, fulfilling the ACT initiative, which part of that is consolidation. So we need to look for more and more opportunities like this in all the different departments. No one's immune. We need to look for opportunities to reduce and downsize and streamline government. It's good government to consolidate. Thank you. Mr. Almiron. Uh, I would like to explore this issue further, and I'd really like to find some concrete proof that it would save the taxpayers money uh, before uh, we would uh, go further with this. And I think that's why uh, it's initially is a referendum question. Um, right now, before I get those, ans those questions answered, I would be in favor of keeping the, the county uh, clerk's office and the county election commission separate. Uh, both do a good job of maintaining their focus. Uh, the commission should remain bipartisan and not subject to oversight by the county board or the clerk directly. Transparency is maintained and an independent, correct, uh, an independent commission would ensure uh, the election results reflect the will of the people. Uh, that's my position right now. Uh, again, there may, there has, I don't know if there's a study been done, uh, but I'd like to see some more concrete proof. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Eckhoff? I'm in favor of the referendum and I voted to put it on the uh, ballot for your consideration. I think uh, consolidation efforts uh, are generally 
uh, saved money and I work in the 421 building on Tuesdays for county board matters, but I'm also in the building a lot as an attorney, and I see the, uh, the people that are walking in and around, and I think that we can uh, better manage our money if the two uh, offices are brought together, and usually what that does is it doesn't save necessarily the people dealing with the public, but you save overhead from administrators, uh, so I'm in favor of that, and I hope you'll vote for it. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by uh, Ms. Tetro. And the question is, what are your thoughts on gun control? Ooh. Um, you knew there was going to be a divisive one, right? Um, I, I think that there's a, a time and a place for guns. Um, and I mean, I'll tell you that I, I did grow up with uh, a father that went hunting. Um, so I, but I definitely think that there are some rules and some um, changes that need to be made to make sure that our schools and our community are safer. Uh, I think that there's some opportunity to further explore exactly what those policies and changes need, need to be. Um, but I am definitely in favor of making some changes to make sure that everybody feels safe in the community and going to school and um, going to public places and, and just in and around town. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McGowan? I have very mixed emotions about that because I know there are hunters um, uh, and they deserve to, to have um, their guns or whatever for hunting, whatever they want to do with that. But um, I, do, I am in favor of lifting the age of purchasing a gun from 18 to 21. Um, I do think we need some different aspects of how we're going to handle this school situation. Um, I've got mixed emotions of the teachers carrying guns. Um, I really had to look into this further. This all just came up, you know, just within a few months or six months. But I'm very open-minded, and um, I would look at the study. Thank you. Mr. Chinchilla. We have a lot of laws for gun control already. Most of them don't work. I think really what this is a question is of public safety with the schools. And I think if one really looks at the issue that just happened like in Florida, what you'll find is a lot of these people are on medications. And there's really no way to prevent these people from doing an attack, whether it be with a gun or some other tool or method, maybe a car, who knows. The thing is this, what's proven is the fact that in gun-free zones, there's a lot more crime. Just look at Chicago. It's been a gun-free zone for the longest time. So I'm not really in favor of gun control. I don't think it works. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Almiron. I support the Second Amendment. Amendment. Uh, that said, I think reasonable measures uh, can be uh, taken to, to protect lives. Um, I, I support uh, what's uh, being done in uh, the efforts in Springfield uh, to prevent uh, uh, semi-automatic uh, weapons from becoming uh, automatic uh, ones. Um, uh, I believe in the idea of, uh, of protecting our schools and our students especially. And um, I think um, uh, the best analogy would be uh, the federal air marshals. Um, I think somewhere within the schools themselves, whether it be teachers or administrations, uh, there should be uh, those who uh, who are trained and licensed to uh, uh, carry guns uh, concealed uh, to be able to be there to protect our, our children. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eckhoff. Well, this is an issue that we uh, haven't had a lot of debate or study about at the county, uh, but I would suggest that the problem with guns, it's not just in schools. I mean, we've had people come into churches, we've had people come into movie theaters, and I think it's sort of an epidemic of our uh, society, when you see all the violence in movies and TVs and video games, and all of a sudden people become desensitized to a lot of that. Um, I grew up with relatives in Wisconsin, and my uncle would go out, uh, and I would go out with him, duck hunting, never got one, but uh, tried. Uh, so I understand that you can safely use guns, uh, and that people have a right to it, uh, pursuant to the Second Amendment, and they should be able to do that. Uh, but I don't understand why we can't try to keep those out of the hands of the mentally ill. And I don't, when you 
the Constitution says you can have a well-armed militia, I don't understand why that means you can have your own militia. And gangs in the city of Chicago that continually kill people day after day, year after year. Somehow it seems like that should be eliminated. Thank you. Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. I, I disagree with some of my opponents. Uh, gun control is not a new issue. You know, it, last 10, 20 years, something happens, it's all over the news, all the politicians rush to the TVs, they're on there for 30 seconds, and move on to the next story. You know, I, my wife and I own a gun. We don't own an attachment, we don't own anything that, that is going to enhance this firearm, speed up the firearm, make it more deadly, make it less deadly, or anything like that. Whether it's the county board, whether it's the sheriff's office, or the state's attorney's office, if you address an issue, if something comes up in the community, it needs to be enforced, it needs to be addressed. Now, whether that's the current mental health laws, if that's current background checks, if that's seeing something and saying something. Most recent thing down in Florida, all these things failed. Had people just followed the law, perhaps this issue and this concern could have been eliminated. My biggest thing, what I want to do on the county board is make sure that the laws that are in place are enforced while also respecting the Constitution. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by um, Ms. McGowan. And the question is, uh, what, if anything, will you do to encourage the uh, completion of the long-planned East Branch to Page River Trail crosses? The questioner says that this has been planned since the 1970s and possible property owners may include IDOT, ComEd, Metra, the Morton Arboretum, Glen Oak Country Club, Butterfield Park District, Glen Ellen Park District, and the Glen Bard Wastewater Authority. Ms. McGowan. Well, I have to be very honest. Um, I'm not too informed about this, but I will keep my eyes open on it, and I will look into it in a study. And I'm not close to any suggestions or any input from any any uh, anybody uh, that is interested in doing this. But um, I'm willing to take a look at it. Thank you. Thank you, um, Mr. Chinchilla. Hi. Can you? Uh Restate the question again. Uh, I don't think I heard it clearly. Okay. Uh, what, if anything, will you do to encourage the completion of the long planned East Branch DuPage River Trail crosses? And then it went into some details. Okay. So, if I remember correctly, based on what you said, uh, you're primarily talking about the prairie path that goes through the different towns. Um, I'm not aware of uh, incompletion. I know there's always plans to upgrade different trails, but here's what I'm going to say. We really need to look at different aspects of development, and here's why. Anytime you build something, you have to maintain it. It's just like going to the animal shelter and getting a free dog. How much does a free dog cost? You've got to get shots for it, you have to take care of it, you have to feed it, you have to clean up after it. And then when it gets sick, you have to go to the vet with it. And if it passes away, God forbid, there's also the emotional strain and everything else with that. So when we look at doing all these different public developments, we really have to think about what it's going to cost. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Al Almeron? I was just, uh, the other day, I was just visiting um, a supporter of mine who lives uh, in South Wheaton, uh, just on the border uh, of the Arboretum near one of the parks. And I think the problem uh, with this issue is uh, that there are too many units of government involved. I mean, uh, there's, there's the Wheaton Park District that owns the sliver right there. And I think it would take a lot, if not too much, to get, every, to get all the different uh, owners, uh, units of government on board. Uh, to be able to, to make um, this road trail crossing happen. So I think realistically, uh, I don't, uh, to be honest, I don't see this as a huge priority uh, right now. Uh, if someone uh, were to explain to me uh, at this time uh, when, when the county is facing uh, little money coming from the state, uh, how we're going to get this done, uh, I don't think this should be a high priority for uh, the county right now. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eckhoff. Well, this uh, issue hasn't really come to me at all 
in the last uh, year or so because I don't remember hearing about it, but I can tell you that the county is committed to improving and expanding the trail system throughout DuPage County. We just extended the uh, trail system from the county complex into Winfield so that pe people can go back and forth. And there are some costs to that, but it's a priority because we've noticed people use the trails, the Prairie Path, the Great Western Trail, and we, you have to work with ComEd, you have to work with other entities that have an interest in the trails, and we've, we have spent some money on doing that, and I think we're gonna continue doing that because I, people are biking along them, people are walking on them. Um, I'm involved uh, in helping on uh, Earth Day to clean up the Prairie Path, and I'm always shocked, you know, you get out there at eight in the morning, and there's how many people are out there biking and using it, so it's something that uh, I would continue to support. Thank you. Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. As far as the, the, the trail question, I think that's more of a uh, forest preserve question, quite honestly. Um, that said, as a county board member, I fully plan on working with the forest preserve. I do want to, however, um, kind of echo some of the stuff that, that Mr. Eckhoff said. So the county just set up uh, a new communications uh, center in the county complex. Now, it's being built. It's under construction. The county board, because of the rising cost, because it was a no-bid contract, unfortunately, and the rising cost of the taxpayers continue to increase, the county board had an independent individual come in and investigate these rising costs. Good thing is, this individual found about half a million, well, sorry, almost more than a million dollars, almost more than a million dollars in savings. Now, unfortunately, those costs came back to the taxpayer because that same contractor who did this communications building still put in a trail from the commute from the uh, government complex to connect to the trail so it still costs the county and the taxpayers a million dollars to create this walking trail this walking uh path for all the county employees thank you miss tetra um i definitely i everybody loves the prairie path right um i think there's a definitely an opportunity to, to pursue the east branch river crossings um, one of the things that I would encourage um, the question asker to do is get involved with the long-range transportation plan. Um, it's something that the county put out recently. Um, transportation is funded separately from um, your regular uh, tax dollars. It comes from the <clears throat> excuse me comes from the motor fuel tax. So there's an opportunity to fund this um, separately. Um, and join up with people like the Forest Preserve and ComEd and bring everybody in the room and say, what are our goals in this project, but let's pool our money and make sure that our money is um, used to everyone's benefit. So, um, you know, definitely making sure that your voice is heard and that you're advocating for that specific project um, would be a first step. And then, you know, the county taking the lead and bringing together everybody in the same room and pooling everybody's money to make sure it happened would be the second. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by Mr. Chinchilla. And the question is, what changes would you initiate or support regarding the current salary and benefit program for DuPage County board members? This is a great question. I really think that the um, pay is a bit high and it probably should be reduced. The thing is we have to look at this not so much as a job or a pay, but we have to pay people to attract quality people to work, but this is really isn't a job. It's not about a part-time job making money. It's about making tough financial decisions. Because really what we face as a county, even though this is a first-class county, it's a great place to live, there's no more help coming from Springfield or Washington. We're going to have to make some very tough decisions moving forward. So what I say in regards to the pay, it's a bit high. But we need to pay people in order to attract good quality people because there is time involved. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Almiron. I think uh, the, uh, the current uh, pay and, and benefits are, are just fine as it is right now. I think if, if a county board member is going to do a really good job, he or she's going to be uh, on the phone constantly communicating uh, with uh, fellow uh, county board members uh, and not all throughout the week and not just uh, not just meet on committees or, or, or as a board on, on Tuesdays. Uh, so I think uh, to be a really effective uh, county board member, there has to be a lot of time that's being put into it. And, I, and that's why I think that uh, the current pay and the benefits structure is, is, is just fine as it is. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eckhoff? 
Well, there is a lot of time and work uh, that goes into being a county board member if you're doing your job right. And I have to fill out uh, an affidavit every uh, month as to how many hours I've worked on what I've worked on and uh, talk to other elected officials, gone to meetings, gone to different events. Uh, so I, I know, because I have to keep track of it, how much work it is. And it's a lot more work than I thought it was going to be. It's more work than when it was on the Wheaton City Council. So I think the benefits are, are fair uh, as they are today. I have voted numerous times against uh, increases at different periods of time, both for county board and for uh, the countywide elected officials. We've also, well, during the time I've been on the county board, eliminated stipends that people receive for being a chairman or a vice chairman of a committee. We eliminated the mileage benefit that people would get. So we have uh, reduced some things since the time I've been there. But uh, I can tell you it's a lot of work and hopefully I will continue to do that and one of you will Thank find you. out how much. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. And, and there should be a lot of hard work that goes into being a county board member. We're sitting up here today asking for your vote to represent your tax dollars and allocate those tax dollars for your benefit. You know, I, there's no other job that county offers that's part-time, that offers health benefits, offers a pension. I wouldn't be accepting health benefits, I wouldn't be accepting a pension, and these little fringe benefits should not be accepted by any county board member. Uh, currently, my wife works as a felony prosecutor in New Bay County State's Attorney's Office. Because of her employment, I'm eligible for government health care. I don't take it. You know, the better question may be, you know, how can we ensure that our county government officials are actually working hard and actually putting in those hours? One of my initiatives I would look to do as your next county board member would be to actually publicize the amount of hours each individual is putting in. Have an attendance record. Have, have a, a hour sheet that Mr. Eckhoff said, but make it public. Make sure that all the constituents, all the voters, all the taxpayers know exactly how much work each individual who's representing you was actually putting in. Thank you. Ms. Tatro? Um, <clears throat> I think that county, uh, county board members need to be continuously looking for ways to reduce overhead. Um, and I think everything belongs on the table. So if that means county board members pay, then I would definitely say look at it. I agree that we need to increase our accountability and transparency and find out you know, how our county board members are spending their time and what it is that they're doing and making sure that we're being held accountable to the taxpayers. But at this point, I think um, you know, everything needs to be on the table and I'd be willing to discuss county board members pay included on that. Thank you. Ms. McGowan? Well, this is where I differ from anybody up here. Um, I've been attending many years of county board meetings, judicial public safety meetings, transportations. I go to even to the forest preserve meetings. Um, I guarantee you that if you cut the pay in half for all these individuals, you'll see them just be walking out because there's no way that they put the hours in like that, that they say they do. Um, uh, there's no way because, first of all, they have full-time jobs. So if you're putting in all this extra time, there's no way that you can be doing both. I believe that the pay should be cut in half, and I, I guarantee you, you'd probably be getting even better people in there uh, that want to be there for the right reason. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by Mr. Al Almiron, and the question is, is there any county service that should be expanded as opposed to reducing government? Mr. you have one minute. Yes, as I hinted to earlier, I think with the aging baby boomer population uh, in the county, I think um, uh, health services uh, should be uh, increased. Uh, but uh, right now, the convalescent center, uh, uh, now called the Moy Center, uh, uh, does have extra space, and uh, we can uh, we as a county can address the needs of those individuals who are who are aging, uh, who have behavioral problems, who have substance abuse, substance abuse problems, and uh, and since the county owes the space, uh, it can lease the, the extra space to uh, to an for profit organization or a, a hospital uh, to be able to uh, service uh, some of these individuals who are in need. Thank you, Mr. Eckhoff. Well, I guess the one issue that we've looked at or I've looked at over the last couple of years is uh, treatment for heroin addiction. 
and the uh, Heroin Coalition has, uh, first we identified the problem because a lot of people weren't talking about it five or six years ago. We've tried to deal with it by having Rx boxes where you can drop off your drugs, by reaching out to people and letting them know what services are out there, and by the Narcan problem. But we've dealt with all of those, uh, I don't want to say solutions, but uh, remedies or ways to address the problem. And now the next thing that we're doing is treatment, and treatment is very, very expensive. So trying to figure out a way to help people and to pay for it or to get public-private uh, partnership is going to be really difficult because treatment doesn't just seven days or a month, it's more like, from what I'm being told, 90 days minimum, and then of course people relapse over and over, so that's going to be the next challenge, I think. Thank you. Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. I, I agree with Mr. Eckhoff, and I, I do believe that our address of the opioid crisis needs to be expanded. By expanded, I mean properly funded, and, and we need to be realistic about it. Right now, the county pays hundreds of thousands of dollars to lobbyists. We pay a million dollars over to a number of non-for-profit organizations where county board officials could take credit for your donations. The Opioid Commission gets $100,000. We've doubled the animal control budget. We've increased the number of personnel for, uh, in IT for the county. But we're not doing anything other than setting up headlines and saying, hey, we're, we're trying to address the problem. Let's properly fund it. Let's get properly funded individuals to look into treatment, look into education, look into prevention, and look into enforcement of this issue. If this is going to be something that the county is going to be responsible for, let's be serious about it and let's address this concern. Thank you. Ms. Tetro? Um, I think that there's a couple things that we could um, expand in terms of services. One of the things I think we need to focus on is helping bring more businesses to DuPage because I think that that's going to ultimately bring more families to DuPage and going to help our bottom line. So I think continuing to invest in organizations like Choose DuPage to help us bring those groups and help us bring that new business and that economic development to our region is really going to be beneficial. Uh, I also think, you know, in terms of um, helping with the opioid and um, heroin and those genuine epidemics, um, continuing to keep this be a safe and great place for people to live and work and raise a family. Those are definitely important too. Uh, and I agree that, you know, funding that is going to be a challenge. But I also, you know, back to my original, I think bringing those businesses and bringing more people to help our bottom line will help with those um, other services and funding those aspects. Thank you. Ms. McGowan? Like I said, I was the first one that addressed the epidemic of the heroin back in 2000. I disagree with my opponent. Um, I don't believe that the, the right thing is to put these people in jail or in prison because it's costing the taxpayers in the DuPage County Jail $130 a day and they're not getting the treatment that they need. We need to address the problem. We need more treatment centers, we need more programs, it's cheaper to treat them with the treatment centers. Uh, the three programs I would deal with is mental health, the drug program, and more senior citizen uh, uh, programs. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Chinchilla. DuPage County has a number of issues. A lot of people don't know it, but about a third of the children born in DuPage County are born into poverty. We have a lot of seniors who can't afford to live in their homes that are moving. And yes, heroin is a big problem in the county. And it's probably one of the areas that probably needs to be focused on more because people's lives are at risk. So we should put more money toward working in that area. But another area that's related to the heroin epidemic is immigration and also people that are here illegally. A lot of people don't know this, but the DuPage County Sheriff Office in February of last year, six months before Bruce Rauner signed the uh, Trust Act, actually made DuPage County a sanctuary county. So if we're going to talk about public safety and heroin epidemic, we need to keep these people out or at least detained so our government can vet them properly. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by Mr. Eckhoff. And the question is, how will you ensure county residents that you will represent them and not special interest groups? Uh, because I've done that for 29 years, both on the city council and the county board, 
I'm open, accessible to anybody. My wife and I went on a 11 day vacation that we uh, planned two years ago and I was still calling the residents about their concerns when they were calling my office. So I don't care if you're a special interest group of one or you're the biggest interest group in the county or Democrat, Republican, I don't care who you are, but I'm open, available, and we'll be happy to talk to you and work with you to either get an answer to your concern or to try and solve it. Sometimes I've got bad news for you, sometimes the answer is no. It's the hardest thing for a government official to do is tell people no, because you can't always do things that they want, but at least I'll listen and try and work with you and uh, bring your concern to a conclusion. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. I think the, the two biggest things should be honesty and accessibility. Uh, as an attorney, and you're also an officer of the court. Before you go in front of a judge, you can advocate on behalf of a client, but you can't lie to the judge. You can't uh, lie on behalf of your client. You know, that's something I practice every day in my life, not only in my job, but also at home. You know, as far as accessibility, uh, last week, um, one of my flyers was dropped on 30,000, actually over 30,000 homes in Wheaton and Glen Ellen. Now, they weren't Republican homes, they weren't Democrat homes, they weren't independent homes, they weren't voters, they weren't non-voters, they were everybody. Every single flyer had my personal cell phone number on it. Any voter, non-voter, Republican, Democrat, independent that has a concern while I'm on the county board could call my personal cell phone number. I will answer you, we'll discuss the issue. We may not agree, but your issues are going to be addressed one way or the other. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Tatro? Um, similar in line, I, I think the number one thing you can do is be accessible um, and be approachable. You know, I'm, I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a daughter, I'm a wife, I'm all these, all these things that have a lot in common with a lot of the folks, you know, here in, in our community. So I think having somebody that you know and you trust that you can approach um, is one thing, but having somebody that's accessible and that you know will return your phone call or email you back or whatnot is, is second. So, you know, making yourself available and being approachable um, are, are definitely ways to do that. Thank you. Ms. McGowan. I will be available to anybody that comes to me or calls me, uses my website. Um, I, like I said, I go to all the county board meetings, or many of them, um, and I do talk with other people. I, um, I want to know what's going on in their neighborhood, what I can help them with. I've always been there for them. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chinchilla. How will you ensure that the county resident? How will you ensure county residents that you will represent them and not special interest groups? It's a great question. I think really, really you need to look at the past of where people are and what they represent. I don't do business with the county. Never have. Never will. I don't work for a consulting firm who does business with the tollway and the county. I'm not appearing in court in front of judges. I'm not an attorney. So I have no vested interest to represent anyone, and I'm certainly not getting money from any of these groups. I'm pretty much a self-funded campaign. I'm a business owner, and I'm running for office. Why? Because I'm concerned about taxes here in DuPage. We have a serious problem that we need to take care of. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Elmeron? I've been an attorney for almost 24 years, so um, it's, I have an obligation to communicate well with my clients, uh, to be accessible uh, with them. I try very hard to uh, uh, get back to them within 24 hours, and I would do the same on county board in terms of getting back uh, to uh, uh, a resident uh, who has a question or who needs something done. Uh, I'll be accessible that way. Uh, but like my opponents, I'm not beholden to uh, companies who have donated uh, large uh, sums to their campaigns. Uh, all my donations come from individual citizens uh, here in District 4 itself. Uh, so I think uh, uh, I'm in touch uh, directly with uh, the citizens of District 4, and uh, I'll do my very best uh, to be accessible to them uh, once I'm elected on the county board. Thank you. Thank you. Our next question will be answered first by um, Mr. Zaruba, and the question is, should the number of county board members be reduced from 18 to 12, and if so, why? You know, that's a really good question. I know some of the other counties uh, in the Chicagoland area have looked into this and, and actually have reduced uh, 
their uh, county board representation. Um, you know, <laughs> looking at it, you know, right now I don't think our district, District 4, has a strong enough voice. You know, one of the concerns I would have would be, okay, if we, you know, narrow it down to just two and, you know, it'd be two across the board for everyone. That'd be an even bigger concern. One of the last questions dealt with, okay, well, you know, how do you, uh, how do you know that an individual's going to be working for you and, and not special interests or not other groups or anything like that? And, and what are they going to do to be accessible? You know, I, I think if you lower the amount of representation that you have, you're also going to lower that accessibility. Um, I, I think the number is fine right where it is right now at three per district. We are a growing community, although the state of Illinois has citizens fleeing left and right. DuPage County is doing a good job to keep our citizens here, and they should ensure that we have our citizens here. But I think as it stands right now, the representation is fine. If the prop, uh, population decreases, Thank you. it should be reduced. Thank you. Ms. Tatro? Um, in terms of you know having 18 versus 12, I think that um, the number should be reflective of the population. So I do think that having three right now is um, or three for our district is fair. Uh, I also think that you need to have a variety of people on the board that represent a variety of um, talents and expertise and uh, different groups. I think that we need to have diversity on the board. I think that these people, you know, need to bring different skill sets to the table. And I think that if that's, you know, three people that bring different groups, then, then that would be a fair number. So, um, thank you. Thank you. Ms. McGowan? Well, this is $52,000 a year that taxpayers are paying these individuals plus health care. And I believe that this county board can function just as well with two people on this board and get things done. Don't forget, this is a part-time position at $52,000 a year. Let's make it more of a, maybe a full-time job. Uh, make them work for their money and make them work for you. But there's no need to have three on the board. And I'm for favoring it to just drop it down to two per county board. Thank you. Mr. Chinchilla. Having two county board members per district might not be a bad idea. The only problem with this is, is when you consolidate members of the board, then people tend to have a lot more political control. So probably the better answer to the whole thing is that the county board members' pay should probably be reduced and continue to have the three. Thank you. Mr. Almiron? I think all of us uh, should know that right now uh, elections are, are staggered. You know, one election cycle, we're voting for one, one, we're voting for two. Uh, a lot of it depends on the census. Um, I think uh, perhaps maybe more importantly, uh, the county uh, has uh, lots of business that it has to conduct. It has a lot of committees, and you have a lot of county board members that serve as chairs and, and, and uh, vice chairs who serve on committees. And uh, that's how the county business gets done. I mean, uh, throughout the week, legislation gets crafted. And um, I think that three is a, a good number as it is. Uh, it's hinted by uh, one of my opponents. Uh, accessibility is important. And, um, and it's, it's better for the citizen uh, in a particular district to, to contact uh, somebody if, if there are three of them or one of three uh, that uh, a resident can contact with an issue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eckhoff? Well, two things. Number one, the county board uh, was reduced from 24 to 18 a number of years ago, and that's when the Forest Preserve was created. Number two, and I don't have the numbers off the top of my head, but I think Lake County, Kane County, and Wall County all have more county board elected officials than we do. I think Lake's got like 26, and they're probably about half the size of us. Uh, I usually get this question after I've told somebody something they didn't like to hear, and they're like, we're going to go from three to two and you're gone. So, uh, and so I understand that. Uh, I think it would be, I'm, I'm open to look at the issue. I'm not sure going down to 12 is, is better. Our, uh, the District 4 is larger than a state rep district, so there's a lot of people out there, and three people I think can cover pretty well. So it's, it's something I think about, but not just because you're trying to derail what I'm trying to do, which is usually consolidation. That's the people who are going to get consolidated get ticked off about that. Thank you. 
Uh, this is the final question before we go to the closing statements, and it will be answered first by Ms. Tatro, and the question is, what qualifications do you possess that differentiate you from the other county board candidates? Uh, I'm, I'm sure that there's a, a lot of things that we all have in common. Um, I'm invested in the community. Uh, like I said, I'm a mom. I've got three little kids. Um, we're here for the long haul. So we're involved in the community. Um, I'm a member of different organizations. Um, I've got an active role at the Wheaton Park District. Um, but I'm also a businesswoman. I've been in the transportation industry for the last 15 years. Um, I've got my MBA. I've seen and worked with different budgets. I've um, supported various capital programs, um, whether it be at the tollway or in partnership with somebody else. So I think um, my transportation background would be an asset to the county, um, helping them advance transportation and helping them, you know, really bridge the communities and bring more businesses and more families here and continue to make this a great place to live and work and raise a family. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. McGowan. Like I've said over the years, I've been coming to county board meetings, executive board meetings, um, transportation, uh, forest preserve meetings. I did not just come to this county board yesterday to get on the board. I've been doing this a long time. I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a person that's very interested in the county level. Um, I've always been there for all of you, and I'm asking you to be there for all of me. Um, it, I've been going to these meetings um, for years, and um, I, I didn't get on this board just to get on this board and start coming to these meetings. So. I've been there for you, and uh, I want to be there to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chinchilla. Like I said earlier, as a business owner, I think I bring a unique set of skills to the county board. The thing is this, as a business owner versus just being an employee, uh, business owners, they deal with a tremendous amount of different aspects. Payroll, employees, strategy, all types of problems a lot of things that go on in the background even at the county level there's a lot of things that go on in the background that you're not aware of so as a business owner I'll bring a unique set of skills to deal with these problems and the thing is this we make tough decisions as business owners we always have to remake ourselves and adapt to the economy and what's going on in DuPage County although it's a great place to live we face many challenges ahead financially and we're going to have to make some very tough decisions. So you have to ask yourself, who do you want at the helm? Someone with experience that can deal with tough situations or someone that's looking for a part-time job? Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Almiron. I'm a husband, father, attorney, and I've, uh, I own a small business and I've counseled on small business clients. I have substantial volunteer board experience I'm a trustee and treasurer of the Wheat Mosquito Abatement District. Uh, for the past couple school years, I've been secretary of uh, my son's parochial school uh, advisory board. Uh, I'm currently president of my condominium association board, and before that, I served a year and a half on the city of Wheaton planning and zoning board. Um, I have substantial uh, community experience uh, where I've served on boards, made tough decisions on approving budgets, and uh, voting on tax levies. And um, I use all the years of my experience. Uh, I offer that as proof my, of my ability to succeed on the county board. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Eckhoff. Well, the one thing I would ask you to look at is experience. I've been on the boards, I've served, and I've gotten results. And I think they've been positive results that made District 4 in DuPage County a better place to live. And if you like living here, I, I hope uh, you'll recognize that I've been part of the solution. Um, in addition, I've been working on projects for a long period of time, uh, such as what I referenced before with uh, using the court security in the courthouse. That was a five-year project. Uh, consolidation started in 2008, still not over, won't be over during your grandchildren's <coughs> lifetime, but you've got to start somewhere and start working on things. I'm also focused on other problems, like I said, heroin, and DuPage County has conducted the active shooter training for police officers and sheriffs before what happened in Florida. 
years ago we started that, two or three years ago, and we're going to have another one next year. So it's not that I'm just serving and taking up space, I'm continuing to work on problems that deal, we Thank deal you. with day to day. Thank, Thank you. you. Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. You know, having business experience is great. Uh, having experience in public service is great. Uh, it's my understanding that I'm the only candidate of the six of us who has a combination of both public service experience as well as being in the private sector. Um, not only am I a former felony prosecutor, I've also been part of access to utilized five other uh, government, uh, county government uh, departments on a daily basis. In addition to that, although not a business owner, I partake in a monthly uh, budget meeting at my firm where we discuss revenue, payroll, expenditures, overhead, where we're dealing with all these issues on a monthly basis. Out of the six candidates, I have that combination of both public service and experience dealing with the financial issues. I plan taking that experience both in both realms and applying it to help the taxpayer and helping you. Thank you. We've now come to the closing statements. Each candidate will have one minute to give a closing statement. And we will begin with Paula McGowan. Well, I'm a the email said two minutes. Uh, local Lee. What? It said two in the email. What? It said two in the email. It said two in the email. Okay, well. Two minutes. Could I get a ruling from the league here who is sponsoring this? Is it going to be one minute or two minutes? Okay, if the candidates prepare two minutes, you will have up to two minutes for a closing statement. Mr. Uh, I mean, Paul McGowan, you will go first. Okay, well, I've been a lifelong resident of DuPage County, and um, I'm fiscally conservative, and like I said, I'm very frugal with my money, and I guarantee you I'm going to be frugal with yours. Um, like I said, I stopped a $70 million government building from being built. I went in front of the county board. I was, I wanted this, this uh, looked into, and they found out that there was no need to have a $70 million building being built with the taxpayers' dollars. I also, like I said, started the, uh, the talk about the reinstatement of drug court in the year 2000, when none of the county bo uh, board members believed that we had an epidemic back in the year 2000. And I told them, I said, are we going to wait till we have a problem? even bigger than what we have. These kids are dying and we need some help. And I told them we need some treatment centers. It's cheaper to have treatment centers than to throw them into the DuPage County Jail or putting them into prison where it's a revolving door and they're still not getting treatment. So um, I've done a lot over the years. I've, I'm very qualified. Like I said, I've gone to many, many board meetings. I just didn't come here to get my 250 signatures to be on this county board. I've been doing it. I've been doing it for free, and I'm not asking for any, you know, any of your money. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chinchilla. No, Mr. Chinchilla gets last. No, I started. No. no, no, it's we're going in the no, order. That's how we're doing it? No, no, no. I'm the moderator. Uh, I'm following the uh, rules, and the rules right. were that we go in the order that. You drew lots, and right. you were next after Ms. McGowan. That is the revolving. That's what we've been doing during the whole forum. No, but with all due respect, I thought I thought uh, when we had a discussion over there, I thought we would do the op we would do the opposite. We would go with uh, after Ms. McGowan. We would go with uh, we'd work our way over. We'd go with uh, Ms. Tatro next, and all the way down to Mr. Chinchilla. Do you want Mr. Chinchilla to go next? Mr. Chinchilla will go next. Okay. Yes, I, I would appreciate that. That okay. is. How it was explained okay. to me. I am very right. sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry for the argument. And I, I'm very sorry that uh, it, for the confusion. All right. Sorry about that, everyone. Well, we have a really host of characters here running today, and I highly recommend that you investigate all of the candidates running. We have a candidate with an interesting driving record. We've got a candidate who's running on public safety who's, well, we'll just move on. We have a candidate that does business with the county and the tollway, and we have a candidate that was in Time Magazine praising Radford Boyevich. <sighs> we 
we need, excuse me, it's my turn to talk. We need a candidate that has no vested interest and no outside support that's going to do anything wrong with the county board. You know, Illinois is in trouble. We've hit a giant financial iceberg. The state is listing hard to the left, and it's going to go down. A lot of smart people have jumped onto lifeboats and gone to other states. But the remaining few here, even though DuPage County is a first class county, we stand to go down unless we make some very tough financial decisions. Moving forward, we're going to need someone with business acumen who's going to be able to go in there and make tough decisions. I'm an outsider. I'll be your voice on the board. I'll work hard to cut cost and consolidate. And this is why I'm asking for your support. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Elmeron? Thank you. As I said, I'm a husband, father, and an attorney with lots of substantial volunteer board experience. I strike the right balance between community experience and professionalism. I work well with others. My proven conservative uh, voting record and board experience demonstrates that I'd be an ash, uh, asset on the county board. I've worked, in, I've worked directly with all the communities I, I, I've been a part of. I helped fend off the Haymarket Center uh, 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 variance application in the city of Wheaton, uh, arguing that uh, opioid epidemic is a uh, county problem, not a city one. And uh, there are many places in the county, uh, possibly over at uh, that vacancy in the Milwaukee Center, uh, where uh, uh, a center to treat uh, op opioid addicts uh, can be uh, can be uh, explored. Um, there is an opportunity for public-private uh, partnership there uh, for a holistic, long-term uh, solution uh, that would benefit uh, the citizens in need. Uh, I'm all for. Uh, Limited government, low taxes, decreased spending, and expedited consolidated uh, units, uh, expedited uh, consolidation of units of government. Um, I'm not a career politician. I'm not connected with one, or nor am I rela uh, related to one. I'm not a political insider, and I'm proud of that. Uh, all my donation donations uh, for my campaign come from the people, the citizens of District 4. I'd be accountable to the people and the people only. To all the Republican voters out there, we face a, we face a big challenge from the Dems, from the Democrats in November. Uh, as hinted here, the Democrats of District 4 have changed uh, the past 10, 15 years and I'll broaden the Republican Party's base of support. As a member of many, uh, many communities in District 4, I'm the most electable county board uh, candidate in both the primary and general elections. Uh, and I ask uh, that you pick two, uh, I'm number two on the ballot, uh, that you vote for me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Eckhoff. Thanks for reminding me about ballot position. I'm number one on the ballot. So, uh, I'm also endorsed by the Daily Herald, Dan Cronin, your state's attorney, Bob Berlin. Uh, the reason that there's two of us endorsed from the Daily Herald is no one said it, but you can vote for two of us, not just one of us. So uh, please remember that when you go into the, the poll. Um, I think our last question before this, uh, we've got to say a lot of things as to why uh, you should vote for us. I'm proud of my service in District 4 in DuPage County. Um, I hope that you think I've done a good job and that you continue to support me. Um, I wanted to let people know uh, I, my campaigns, although I do have fundraisers, I'm very much self-supporting. My campaign over the entire time that I've been a candidate owes me about $100,000. So the only person I owe real allegiance to is my wife. And uh, <laughs> usually I get home and it says, uh, when are we going to have another fundraiser? So uh, I think I've worked hard. I think DuPage County is a great place to, uh, to live. And I'm asking for your support on March 20th. Thank you. Mr. Zaruba. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the League of Women Voters as well as everyone here today. Um, you didn't have to, but you decided to spend your morning with us listening to these issues. And I, I personally really appreciate it. Um, you know, what just happened was a little un unfortunate. Um, you have six individuals in front of you. Um, these are qualified candidates. They're all good candidates. Uh, the winner, no matter what happens, on March 20th is going to be the taxpayer. Um, Mr. Elmeron is a good father. He cares about his community. Mr. Eckhoff has done a ton for the not only Wheaton City Council, but also the county board in helping out consolidation, saving costs. Ms. Tatro is a successful businesswoman. She's also a great mother and a great wife. 
And Paula McGowan is a great wife. She's helped out in the community. She cares about the people that she represents and the people that she's hoping to represent on the county board. We have great individuals. We have great candidates. I hope to be your choice on March 20th. But this should not take away from any of my opponents. The Daily Herald has endorsed me. I have endorsements from a number of elected officials, but also independent organizations as well. The, the Illinois Citizens for Life, the Hellenic Voters of America, and the Illinois, or rather the Italian American uh, Political Coalition. All these individuals, all these organizations have endorsed my campaign. I hope I do win on March 20th, but that said, I have a number of great opponents in this race, and the taxpayers are gonna, the taxpayers are gonna benefit on March 20th. Thank you. Thank you, and the final closing statement is from uh, Ms. Tetro. Um, I want to also thank everybody for coming today. Um, I want to thank the League of Women Voters. This has been an awesome opportunity to meet new folks and definitely learn about the candidates. Um, I also want to leave you with a couple of things about me. Uh, you know, I've got deep roots in DuPage County. I was raised in DuPage. I'm an active member of our community. I have real world business experience. Um, I've been a consultant helping the Illinois Tollway deliver their program, and I want to take some of those best practices in that quasi-government environment and bring them to DuPage County. I think there's opportunity for partnerships and shared services, but ultimately, I want to create a thriving county um, for you, for me, for the future generations that come. I'm in it for all of us. Um, I know that lowering the tax burden and uh, creating small, accountable government is going to lay the foundation for that. Um, and I would also ask that when you leave here today, the things that you've learned and the things that you talk about, um, you know, talk about the various candidates and help us spread the message and um, the things that we're advocating for and a little bit about us because I think that, that that's really what, you know, makes educated voters and brings everybody to the polls if they have some, somebody that they know or somebody that they believe is a good candidate. So I would ask um, that you guys help us out and help us spread the word and all the great things that we're trying to do for DuPage County. Thanks so much. Thank you. And I'd like to thank all of you for coming today and for uh, listening. I apologize for the confusion. Uh, we got signals crossed here. Hopefully that will not happen again. Um, there, this, As I said in the beginning, this will be on YouTube in the next uh, 24 hours. I'd also like to thank all of our candidates for participating today for their thoughtful and, uh, responses and, uh, and for again giving up their morning. So let's give them all a big hand.